Where's that blasted salami? Just like in Street Fighter, Akuma is a very all-or-nothing character who specializes in 50-50s with his demon flip and powerful close-range mid-low mix-ups. As the only character to have a meter bar, he can use it to extend his combos and make his mix-ups safer with FADC, or burn them on powerful EX and super moves. Akuma gets a lot of his big damage and pressure via jumping, and just like in Street Fighter, jumping is quite risky as it can be interrupted, or anti-aired, for big damage. Fireballs aren't quite the space control tool they are in Street Fighter, as they're easily sidestepped, but can be used to stifle an opponent's approach and frustrate them into making mistakes. Akuma is also the only character to have a fully invincible Shoryuken, which means he can disrespect a lot of pressure. Akuma is recommended for players who like unorthodox mix-ups and, of course, Street Fighter. Alisa is a very poke-oriented character. She excels at slowly chipping down the opponent with good range low and mid pokes, and then whiff punishing with her excellent sidestep. She can go on the offensive with running too, which is immensely damaging on hit, and if the opponent blocks, leaves them at heavy disadvantage. They can try to duck or sidestep this, though Alisa has strong answers for both options. Overall, she's perfect for players who like to play a slow, methodical paced game. Alisa is recommended for players who like simple poking and defensive play. Asuka is an extremely defensive character, whose evasion makes it very hard for the opponent to approach or pressure her. Asuka's offense is decent at best, but since she's so good at making opponents second-guess themselves, she has more opportunities to pester them with her jab strings and up-close pokes. If they struggle against this, they risk being punished for big damage. Asuka is recommended for players who want an easy and effective defensive character. Bob is a versatile character who is capable of both rushdown and keep out. He specializes in close range aggression though, with his suffocating poke strings and powerful mix ups off of wave dash, which is excellent for quickly closing distance. On top of this, he also has good tracking, making it hard for opponents to move around his pressure. Bob is recommended for players who like versatile characters with an emphasis on offense. Brian is renowned for his amazing blend of keep out and rushdown, and Tekken 7 is no different. He has plenty of tools to keep his opponent at range, and his offense is not only damaging, but also relatively safe. There is a steep execution curve to Brian if you want to get into his really silly stuff, such as the infamous unblockable taunt jet upper. Brian is recommended for players who want a well-rounded character with an emphasis on defense. Replacing Lars as the most anime character, Claudio is infamous for having the best hop kick in the game, with its huge range, quick whiff recovery, and hilarious hurt box. He also has a unique power-up which gives him one-time buffs to certain moves, along with one of the best approach tools in the game with his running 2, which is both massively damaging on hit and advantageous on block. Claudio can be played both defensively and offensively. He is recommended for players who like explosive high damage and unique power-ups.
Compared to the other Mishimas, Devil Jin can be considered the well-rounded of the three. He has stronger pokes than Kazuya, but isn't as hard-hitting, and has better lows than Heihachi, but lacks his powerful counter-hit tools. As a Mishima, Devil Jin has access to all the standard Mishima tools, making him a powerful and versatile character, but with a high execution seal. Devil Jin is recommended for players who want a balanced Mishima character. Dragunov is a pretty relentless character in terms of pressure. He has the best approach tools of any character with his running too. This allows him to be constantly in your face while chipping away at you with effective low and mid pokes. This is complemented by his powerful punishment tools and high damage. So mistakes will not be tolerated in Mother Russia. Uh, sorry. Dragunov is recommended for players who want relentless rushdown and the ability to punish mistakes heavily. Eddie excels at frustrating opponents with his variety of evasive transitions into his relaxed stance mix-up, which the opponent will need good matchup knowledge to even hope to defend against. While his sidestep is poor, his backdash is excellent, allowing him to keep his distance and chip away with strong pokes while looking for moments to enforce relaxed mix-ups. Eddie is recommended for players who want an unorthodox, evasive character focusing on 50-50 mix-ups. Feng can be played in a variety of playstyles, but his most defining characteristic through it all is his evasion. It's very hard to keep him out with his high crushing low pokes and powerful mids. Conversely, he's also very hard to pressure as he has a plethora of evasive panic moves fast count hit interrupts, and an auto parry starts. Feng is recommended for players who want a well-rounded character with an emphasis on evasion. Gigas has one of the best grabs in the game and hard hitting pressure, which makes rushdown the preferred style of play. That said, Due to his long reaching arms, he can also be played as a defensive keypad character. Gigas also has one of the best rage drives in the game, where he starts charging at his opponent, forcing a 50-50 between an unblockable high and wall splatting mid. Gigas is recommended for players who like grapplers with long reach. Heihachi is the offensive Mishima. He comes with all the usual Mishima perks like God Fist, strong jab hit confirms, and a wave dash to close distance. Once he's in your face, he has access to some of the best mids in the game, with which he fishes for big damage on counter hit. His lows are powerful but quite unsafe, meaning he has to play a high risk, high reward game to open the opponent up. Heihachi is recommended for players who want a Mishima based around rushdown. Huarang is a pure rushdown character. Up close, he forces the opponent to make fast defensive decisions or be looped in Huarang's offense, and absolutely murders people who try to mash out. One of the most complex characters in the game, a Huarang player will need both strong execution and creativity against opponents who know how to defend against him. Huarang is recommended for players who like huge movesets and relentless rushdown. Jack is arguably the biggest turtle in the series, and generally does well in tournaments due to his basic game plan. He has huge reach on his arms, allowing him to keep the opponent at bay with jabs and mids, and then punishing their mistakes with ranged whiff punishes. When on the offensive, he has simple but effective mix-ups, 
one of the best low pokes in the game, and is an absolute beast at the wall. Jack is recommended for players who want a simple, defensive playstyle, focusing on fundamentals. Jin has it all. A high damaging poke game, extremely strong mid-range space control, as well as great mobility and Mishima-esque mix-ups from his wave dash. His unique parry can completely change how certain characters pressure him, and overall he's just a very versatile character with the ability to change the pace as he wishes. Jin is recommended for players who want a well-rounded character with an emphasis on mid-range keypads. Josie is one of the new additions to Tekken 7 and Bruce's replacement. Compared to Bruce, Josie has lots of new can string mix-ups to break down the opponent with. She can close the gap quickly with her crouch dash, and when up close, is strong at chipping the opponent down with her poke lows and strings. Additionally, she has some of the best whiff and block punishment tools in the game, making her defensive game really strong. Josie is recommended for players who want an unorthodox poking style and strong punishment. Katarina is an all or nothing, high risk, high reward character with super easy execution. Her best lows are powerful and evasive, but risky, while her safer lows are not very rewarding. Whilst her lows are generally a commitment, she has very strong mids for poking and mix-ups, and some powerful count hit tools to keep the opponent honest. Katarina is recommended for players who want an explosive mix-up character with counter hit heavy gameplay. Kazumi is based around offensive pokes and likes to be up in the character's face to chip them down with her strong hit confirms. She's a very sticky character as she can loop her poke situation over and over until you challenge her and has a strong approach to get in. Her lows are mainly for giving advantage and lack damage however, so she can struggle to make a comeback. Kazumi is recommended for players who want a rushdown oriented, poke heavy playstyle. As a Mishima that specializes in defensive play, Kazuya excels at punishing his opponent's mistakes on whiff or block, and picking moments to go in with his hard-hitting mix-ups to keep them on their toes. Perhaps the purest representation of the Mishima style, Kazuya depends on Electric Wind Godfist in nearly every single facet of his game plan, so your execution will need to be on point. Kazuya is recommended for players who want a defensive Mishima character. King is the closest you will have to a grappler in Tekken 7. His lows are somewhat lacking, but he has a massive arsenal of damaging throws with the opponent having to guess between a 1 or 2 break to get out of them, which he then mixes up with powerful mids. King's damage output, especially on the stage with floor breaks, is pretty ridiculous. If you enjoy a character with strong throws and forced 50-50 situations, King is the one for you. Kuma has two complementary playstyles. His long arms give him a decent jab keepout game and some excellent, easy to use whiff punishes. This allows him to pick his moments to go in with Hunting Bear, which is a very momentum-based stance built around fast low strings and damaging mids. 
with the added bonus of lowering his hitbox. After a successful knockdown, the fun really begins, as Kuma can then start toying with his opponent through some tricky Okizeme setups. Kuma is recommended for players who like to switch between long range keepouts and a party style setup based offense. Lars is one of the most well-rounded characters in the cast, and perfect to learn the game with. Similar to Jin, but easier to use, Lars has very strong basic tools for just about every situation, and can be played in any way the player wishes to. His clear-cut weakness would be that he is quite weak to sidestep right, so homing moves are encouraged. Lars is recommended for players who are basically looking for an equivalent to Street Fighter's Ryu. Lee has some of the best pokes in the game, and excels at chipping away at opponents. He gets his big damage from counter hits, and combined with his excellent wall carry, can quickly turn the tides in battle. At the wall, things go from bad to worse for the opponent, with Lee's assortment of hit confirmable, wall splatting strings. Lee is recommended for players who want a poke heavy character, with an emphasis on wall pressure. Like Lars, Leo is another simple, well-rounded character with strong fundamentals. As of the latest arcade version of Tekken 7, she's considered by many top-level players to be the best character in the game, due to being amazing at just about everything. But let's just take this as an opportunity to note how little that actually matters because of how well-balanced Tekken 7 is. Uh, seriously, just play who you want. Leo is recommended for players who want a basic, versatile, and powerful character. Lily is a character of extremes. Her offensive lockdown game is powerful, but highly vulnerable to sidestep. On the other hand, she herself has the best sidestep in the game, which when combined with her strong punishment and evasive tools, will make opponents hesitant to attack. Once they start doubting themselves, Lily can start pressuring with plus on block mids and damaging lows. Lily is recommended for players who want a highly evasive lockdown character. Ling is difficult to both approach and stop due to her small hitbox, high mobility and evasive stances. She has some of the best low pokes in the game. Her main mid poke goes under highs, and Art of Phoenix stance can drastically reduce the opponent's usable moveset. Her Okizeme is also second to none, making her a lab monster favorite. Additionally, her rage drive is one of the best in the game, giving her an unseeable low launcher. Ling is recommended for players who love discovering setups and freestyling with stance options. Playing against a good Chloe is an exercise in restraint and patience. She's very good at frustrating opponents with quick, annoying poke strings, some of which transition into a back turn stance. From here, she has access to one of the most damaging, potentially round ending combo starters in the game. Much of her game plan thus revolves around baiting opponents into an ill timed counter poke and then punishing hard. Chloe is recommended for players who want to troll their opponents with annoying pokes and high combo damage.
Law excels at up-close rushdown, as his ranged game is a bit mediocre. He has many options to break down turtles, such as his slide mix-up, throw mix-up, or dragon stance pressure. Conversely, attacking him is very risky too, due to his fast, damaging counter-hit interrupts and parry. Law also has some excellent punishment tools, both on whiff and block. Law is recommended for players who want plenty of offensive and defensive options at close range. Raven has a strong control of the mid-range, with various keep-out tools and good whiff punishment. Keep-out with Raven is a bit unorthodox, as it often involves whiffing certain moves on purpose, as they have better recovery that way than on block. She also has some powerful mix-ups from her crouch dash. Raven is recommended for players who want to control space, while employing a lot of unorthodox movement. Miguel is an aggressive, momentum-based character who's good at bullying opponents with his poke strings. Unlike most characters, he doesn't have many standout moves to watch out for, instead having a large arsenal of situational moves that all complement one another, either through being mid, low, or having left-right tracking. This makes him difficult to defend against while he racks up damage quickly up close. Miguel is recommended for players who want a poke-heavy, offensive character that is simple and easy to play. Nina is a very sticky rushdown character in the way that she can keep prolonged offense going. She excels at point-blank range with a lot of her moves having the ability to cancel into a sidestep, allowing her to continue her offense. While Nina's up-close game is powerful, her ranged game is lacking, so it's encouraged to remain in the opponent's face with her. She also has some steep executional demands to get the most out of her combos. Nina is recommended for players who want fast-paced, execution-heavy rushdown. Paul is the 50-50 powerhouse of the game. He wants to be in his opponent's face, constantly enforcing hard-hitting mix-ups between Demo Man and the infamous Death Fist, which pretty much lives up to the name. Death Fist is also an excellent whiff punisher, and Paul's block punishment is way above average, meaning a defensive playstyle can be equally, if not more, effective. Paul is recommended for players who want high damage and explosive 50-50s. Shaheen has a very straightforward game plan. His goal is to frustrate the opponent by staying as close to them as possible while poking them down. This is in the hope that they will press buttons to escape. His counter hit moves are extremely fast and lead to damaging, easy combos afterwards. Shaheen's lows are somewhat mediocre, but like Law and Lee, he can threaten defensive players with his slide mix up. Shaheen is recommended for players who want a simplistic, counter-hit based character with some 50-50 mix-ups from Crouch. Steve's game plan is completely focused around landing counter-hits. His offensive game lacks intimidating lows but is pretty relentless due to his stance cancels, and he now has a bona fide mix-up out of extended ducking. His defense is also excellent, with a strong grip over the mid-range, fast counter-hit interrupts, 
and evasive sways to punish overly aggressive opponents. This is all topped off by some of the best combo damage and wall carry in the game. Steve is recommended for players who want a more complex count hit based character, who can relentlessly pressure opponents. Yoshimitsu is a very unorthodox character. He relies on the player's creativity to get openings with his unique tools, and as a result, he can be defined as a pretty freestyle character. He doesn't have many solid tools to work with in terms of poking and such, so he has tons of situational moves and thrives on creating unusual situations with them. Yoshimitsu is recommended for players who like unorthodox, freestyling characters. Hello and thank you for watching our first Tekken tutorial. This video was just the first step in an ongoing series of guides on this channel, so please do like and subscribe if you want more. If you want to see some of the detailed character breakdowns we'll be featuring in future videos, please follow the link in the description below. It also features Fergus's excellent character overviews guide, which this was based on. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend doing so. It's much more detailed than this video, as I had to cut out a bunch of stuff to squeeze it in under 30 minutes. Shoutouts to Maximilian, Battlefinger, and Zanar Aesthetics for the clips. Uh, apologies if I missed anyone there. Thank you again for watching. My name is Arya, take it easy. I can smell it. <laughs>